showing you the much requested how to make music like tourists so as usual link the project file and samples from this video in the description and if you're a patron on my patreon check there because it'll be available shortly let's dive in so this is the loop we heard in the intro we're at like 119 bpm a little bit slower house tempo and the first sound i have here is a stab i made with analog which sounds like this was like I said using analog I'll show you the notes first basically it's playing this pattern where it's like this kind of syncopated thing and then it's playing off of like what the bass line is doing because you can listen if I play these two together you can hear like the rhythm kind of changes up in the second half there when the bass does something a little bit different like the bass hits on this count in the first in the first bar and then the second bar it hits on this one on the two so it kind of like you know it's kind of a cool way to play with it rhythmically there's also these little things these little like the little um fast i don't know if they're exactly 30 second notes i'll call them like rolls and the way i did those is basically i just have these three very fast notes together and then you can see we've got the velocity down a little bit on that first one. And I guess on these two, it's a little bit lower than this is. But yeah, so what that kind of does is you get those cool kind of like, like the velocity is kind of building. And then that also goes into like how the synthesis program, which I'll talk about when I get to that. But yeah, so definitely pretty, pretty cool stuff going on there. The main thing to take away is just like when you're programming these kind of things, Try to sort of think of it in the context of the whole track and not just like how that one thing sounds on its own. So then for the sound on this one, I made it using analog. What we've got here is we've actually got a sine wave and then we've got a square wave. You can see the square wave, I've got the pulse width up quite a bit um, and then I've got the sine wave two octaves higher because we've got this one at minus one, that one at plus one. And yeah, this is just kind of like a good way to make it really fat because we have this really low square wave, which you can hear without that. Like that's adding on that kind of fat, like low mid range, but then we have this nice sine wave, which is getting distorted in the high end, and that's also, I'll talk about that when I get to it, but yeah, you can hear it's like a nice contrast between those two. It really helps to make the sound really full, and I've also got a little bit of white noise with that. Pretty simple stuff there, just a bit of white noise, nothing too crazy. Then after that, I've got those going into this low pass filter, which you can see is set this way. I've got the frequency there. I've got the resonance there. Those are not being automated, but then I've got the envelope automating. So you can see I've got the envelope amount automating here, and then I've got the attack as well automating. So you can kind of see like, yeah, this just gives it a more like organic feel because it's constantly changing. And not only is it just like the filter opening with this envelope amount, but also the attack. So you can hear it's kind of like changing the way the sound is sounding with that filter and this is really cool because it makes it feel so much more organic and this is something I really like about Tourist Music is he does this kind of stuff very well like he'll have you know like a synth where it's really evolving and changing and it's not just like opening up the filter. So then after that I've got the amp envelope set like this pretty simple and then the last thing we have inside of here just a little bit of vibrato. After that the first effect we have here is the saturator which is very heavy you can see I've got the drive up all the way or not all the way but like pretty pretty strong here's without it. And then with it, so you can hear it's just really taking everything that's coming out of the synth and just beefing it up and making it so much fatter without doing a whole lot of like compression or limiting or anything like that. After that, I've got this echo which is just doing dotted eighth notes. We've got the dry wet down pretty low, but still it's coming through nicely, you can hear. And then we just have a bit of reverb here. Um, same thing there, just kind of like not a whole lot, but it comes through enough that you don't need a whole lot. 
after that, we just got a drum bus here, and I'm using this to make it a bit fat, and this is a really good technique for, like, really kind of percussive leads like this. Like, if I turn this off... And bring it back in there. You can hear it really helps to bring up the reverb and the d and the echo, like, and just make them kind of level with everything else, as well as just making everything a bit fatter. And then the last thing we have here is just a compressor, side chaining it to the kick, and then this EQ8, cutting out a bunch of low end. You can hear, yeah. It was a little too fat there, but it's cutting out the low end, and then it's boosting the high end a little bit as well. So that's the stab. The next thing we have here is this ARP, which sounds like this. So I'll show you the notes on this one. It's basically just going down this D sharp minor chord. That's the key word in D sharp minor. So it's kind of going like F sharp, which is the minor third, D sharp, which is just the root note, and then it's just going A sharp, the fifth, another F sharp, the minor third, and then D sharp. And then what's happening is this is doing kind of an interesting polyrhythm with everything else. If you don't know what a polyrhythm is, basically it's when you have like two different rhythms going on. Like you can hear, if I play the bass line, you can hear the main chord progression is happening very much over the course of like bars. Like we have the first bar, we have this note, second bar, we have this note, third bar, we have this note, fourth bar, we have that note. And it's very like, you know, it's very linear like that. But then what this is doing is it's doing triplets and it's doing like... You can hear it's not restarting on a bar, it's restarting on this triplet there. And so what happens is this is a polyrhythm. Multi poly meaning multiple, multiple rhythms. And this is really a background layer. Like this is more like how you would have like a drone or something like that. But it's mostly just meant to kind of provide some background like musical stuff. By having that polyrhythm, it's also kind of like adding a lot of nice kind of rhythmic stuff as well. Like I really like how I'm really getting the most mileage out of this. It's not just doing one thing. It's adding both this nice background musical context as well as like some good rhythmic stuff. So for the sound on this one, I made it using analog. It's just one sine wave going into the amp envelope, which is set like kind of plucky. And yeah, then after that, we've got dotted eighth notes on this echo here, a little bit of reverb. And then I have the Haas effect. And so the Haas effect, if you don't know what it is, is basically just this cool stereo effect where you split the sound into the left and the right signal, and you push one of them ever so slightly forward. And in doing so, what happens is your brain is hearing the same sound, but at slightly different times in each ear. So it kind of just sounds like this big, wide stereo image. And that is how your brain perceives it. So yeah, that's what we're doing here. You can see I've got this, this audio effect track, and we've got two chains, one pan all the way to the right, one pan all the way to the left. It doesn't matter which one you do it on, but I've delayed the left one a little bit forward. You can see we've got it on like 10.3 milliseconds. And then I've got, yeah, the simple delay here. It's linked, so it's a mono delay. Um, no feedback, dry wet all the way up. And that's all this is doing. It's just pushing it slightly forward so we get the big stereo image. So here's without it. And then with it. So you can hear it really helps to just kind of put this like and make it bigger and wider and kind of get it out of the way of everything else as well. Like this is something that's big and wide and then everything else is very much in the middle just kind of uh, out of the way. So then after that, I just have a compressor so I'm turning this one to the kick and then I've got an EQ8 cutting out the low end. So the next thing that we have here is this bass which sounds like this. So I was trying to get one of those big kind of like tourist style bass lines and I think I pretty much know that the thing is a lot of his stuff his stuff has a very major sounding kind of like vibe to it and this is very minor sounding but I think it's still got that kind of that kind of feel to it and so yeah so the way that I made this you can see these are the notes it's just playing the chord progression so we got D sharp B and then G sharp and then just a G sharp down an octave and then we've got another D sharp B and then C sharp and then we go down to another G sharp. So pretty simple stuff. And you can see it's playing this kind of pattern where it's going like, you know, it's not starting right on the one there. That's just to make it kind of more interesting rhythmically. And you know, make it not just so like flat and simple. And this is something I hear in a lot of tourist music as well. So and then for the sound on this one, I'm it using operator. What we've got here is just this pretty simple FM sound. I've got a saw wave. And then I'm doing a little bit of FM with a sine wave here. And then those are going into this low pass filter. So the filter has a very small bit of envelope on it. 
But you can see I'm moving the filter frequency throughout the track as well. So this is kind of like something that's going throughout this track. Like you can see like with this analog, like I was showing you the stab um, and all these other things. Like we've just got this filter frequency moving throughout the track so that it's not just the same thing. You know, it kind of makes it feel more organic. And like it's kind of changing and living and breathing and not just like, yeah, staying the same the whole way through. After that, I just have a compressor side chaining it to the cake. And then I have the CQ8 cutting out the low end. Um, it's really just cutting out, like, the low mid-range. Because it's cutting around, like, 200 to about, like, a little bit under 100. We can maybe tighten up the Q on that. But, yeah, it's just cutting out that range. Um, it's pretty simple. It's just because that range is where the kick is really hitting. So you can hear if I solo these two together. And we don't have that on. It's kind of getting in the way of the kick. But then when I turn it on, there you go. We still get the nice low end, but it's not getting in the way of the kick. After that, we have this kick, which sounds like this. And so this is pretty simple. It's really just about, like, the type of kick and then doing a few small things to make it boomy. So, like, with this kind of kick, you don't want something too huge. You just want something kind of smoother and a little bit softer. That's what I've noticed with tourist music. It tends to be kind of like, like, it's not, like, full-on, you know, super strong, clubby, house-type kicks. It's more like soft kind of stuff like this. So that's what I have. Just a softer kick. And then you can see I've got a bit of drum bus on it. Just kind of beefing it up. And then adding a small amount of boom. Which is tuned to D sharp. The key of this track. So then I've got the bass and the kick in a group together. And the reason for this is just to kind of help make the low end a bit stronger. These two are really the main things making up the low end. So by grouping them together and doing a small amount of compression. Which I'll explain in a moment. We just kind of make it sound a bit bigger. And a bit more together. So. What we've got here for effects is this compressor. Here's without it, and then with it. So you can hear, this is just doing a little bit of compression. I've just got a, the threshold turned down a little bit. We've got the attack up so it's not messing up. The transients on the kick. And again, it's just helping to kind of glue these together a bit better and make the low end a bit fatter. So then the next thing we have here is this chord synth, which sounds like this. So what it's doing is it's playing this chord progression, which is kind of playing off of what the bass is doing. This is almost like a counter melody. It's a little wonky with the bass line, I know, but I think it does work in the track. And what it's doing... As you can hear, it's just adding like... just something different to the whole like musicality of this track like you can hear it's really just sort of playing off of everything that's happening and if I turn this off this track works pretty well but it's not as dense as I hear tourist music being like I hear it in a lot of his tracks he has like very dense in instrumentation and just a lot going on so I feel like having something like this that's just kind of again doing almost like a counter melody but with chords off of everything else it's a nice layer. And yeah, so we just have like these chords here. We've got like B major, D sharp minor, so the root the root chord. We have this little G sharp here where I've taken this the mi the major third and just moved it down to. And then I put that up an octave. I've got all the thirds up an octave here. And then we just have a C sharp major, I believe. Yeah, C sharp major. So Pretty simple stuff. And then you can just see we've got this kind of like the filter is opening up throughout the course of this track. And yeah, so the way that I made this sound is basically using analog. What we've got here is we've got a sine wave and then we've got a saw wave. And those are going into this low pass filter, which you can see, like I said, is opening up over the course of this track. It's pretty important from the sound because you don't really hear it as much in the beginning. But it's kind of, you feel it coming in. And then as it opens up. It's really helping to add a lot of tension to the track. So then after that, we've just got a bit of vibrato. Pretty simple stuff here. I've got the rate up pretty high. You can hear that's what it's doing. And yeah, so then after that, we've just got a bit of echo, a bit of reverb for some space, a side chain, uh, side chaining it to the kick, and then just an EQ8 cutting out the low end. This one, you know, I really wanted to do a pretty strong cut since there isn't really a lot of room for a lot of other stuff in this track. So then the next thing that we have here is this pasta shaker sample, which sounds like this. 
So what this is, is a recording of me actually shaking a box of pasta. And you can see I chopped it up and then I've just got a few effects here. So the first thing I've got here is this echo. You can see it's just, yeah, just doing this. I've got it on milliseconds. And this just to add some kind of obscureness to it. Here's without any echo what this sounds like. So it sounds cool, but it doesn't quite have that like really like big kind of almost ethereal shaker vibe that I heard in a lot of um, tourist tracks like Apollo and like stuff like that. So that's the purpose of this echo and this grain delay here. Basically, these two things are on here just kind of like spreading it out a bit and making it a bit more like in the background percussion. So I've got the echo here doing this 179 milliseconds. And I've got the grain delay here. That's just kind of adding more like weird texture to it. There's without it. It helps to put it in the background a little bit more. And so I have that set. And yeah, pretty simple stuff there. Then after that, I just have a, a compressor side chaining into the kick and an EQ8 cutting at the low end. And that is it for the shaker. Um, the next thing that I have here is this hi-hat, which sounds like this. Actually, both of these hi-hats. So you can hear these are just two different hi-hats. I've got this one playing on the upbeats. And then this one, just kind of adding some little percussion in there. And yeah, on the percussion hi-hat, I have a bit of track delay, which I'm also using on that pasta shaker. So basically what the track delay is doing is it's just kind of pushing these back a little bit. What this does is it's basically the exact same thing as moving like the contents of the track over to the right or to the left, however many most things. It's just a little bit easier to work with it this way um, when you have it as a slider over here. And yeah, so to turn this on, you just click this little D icon down here. Pretty simple stuff, but it helps with the groove. Like it helps to make everything kind of play off of each other a little bit better. So then the last drum that I have here is this clap, which sounds like this. And this is just like a pretty simple, kind of nice, like hand clappy kind of sound. You can see we've got it playing a little bit before the beat there. So it's kind of playing off of the kick and not just hitting at the same time. Makes it a little bit more organic and analog sounding. And yeah, then after that, I've got all of those in a group, which just has a little bit of comp uh, little bit uh, processing on it. You can see we just got this drum bus here. I've got the drive and the crunch up a little bit. And then I have an EQ8 cutting out the low end. And yeah, these just help to kind of like make all the percussion more, more together sounding. Here's without it. You can hear it's kind of dry. But it just helps to really tie this all together. And yeah, so that is pretty much it for this one. I've shown you everything that I pretty much got to show you in this video. And yeah, so that is me for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed. And make sure to hit that like button as well as to subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. As usual, you can get the project file and the samples from this video in the description. And if you're a patron on my Patreon, check there because they'll be available. Thank you so much, everybody. All the support lately has been really amazing. I love you all, and I will see you tomorrow with another video.